This is a brief introduction to optimization as applied to chemical plants and refineries. Optimization has been applied for a long time to chemical plants and refineries to optimize the selection of, for example, crude oil uh, be able to be able to maximize the profit of the products that come out of the refinery that are shown in blue here. Okay, so um, different crude oils will be able to produce different distributions of products and also um, you know, you have different pieces of equipment within this refinery that can handle different crudes differently. Okay, so um, let's just go on to, you know, with the changing price of, of crude oil um, and also the fraction that you can derive from a typical barrel. You know, there's a big incentive here, especially with refineries and chemical plants running at very tight margins. Um, now, let me just give an overview briefly of, you know, kind of the, the overall uh, acquisition of measurements. Um, so we have our process here. So this would be like a refinery. And then you might have measurement and actuation, valves moving, measurements being taken at uh, you know less than or equal to one second, a safety environmental uh, protection, that would be a, maybe a, a separate layer from the measurement and acquisition. Um, and that might be uh, every less than or equal to one second as well. And then you may have a regulatory control. So that's like your process control. Uh, that might be things like uh, you know PID, advanced control techniques, um, and then you may have multivariate. Okay, so model predictive control or other strategies uh, for optimizing or um, in dynam in the dynamics um, how the process moves, uh, coordinating multiple PID controllers or controllers, and then um, you also have what's called real time optimization that coordinates and gives set points to the multivariate controller. And then the multivariate controller gives set points to the regulatory controllers and and so on. Okay, and then you also have a planning and scheduling optimization. So that's what we're going to be talking about uh, today is this planning and scheduling optimization in terms of which crude oils to buy and, uh, and what distribution of products they make. Okay, so many layers of optimization and dynamics and control that occur in a typical chemical plant or refinery. Okay, so... Um, as we think about our standard feedback loop, okay, so this is our, our standard feedback loop here. That would be like a PID controller, for example, um, where we have process data, we measure that, uh, we have a set point, and then we have our control system, like a PID controller, and then your process, maybe a flow controller, temperature controller, concentration controller. Um, now this is an overview of what happens with our RTO systems. Okay, so this is a real-time optimization, okay, where you have, you reconcile the data with a model, uh, you estimate parameters, and then you do a steady state or dynamic optimization. Okay, now constrained optimization, you're gonna have different, uh, based on what is the form of the model, you may have a nonlinear programming problem or a quadratic programming problem, um, now, these days, nonlinear programming problems, even large scale, can be solved online. Okay, so not necessarily offline, but uh, many of the times they're using those for online to re optimize every minute, every hour, every day. Okay, um, if you have a quadratic, though, quadratic programming problem, um, now that's like a um, you know squared objective with linear constraints, um, you know, then you can perhaps solve a larger scale problem a little bit faster. Okay, and then linear programming problems, those are perhaps the easiest to solve. Um, and uh, we can solve very large scale linear programming problems. Okay, so um, let, me, let me just go ahead and uh, mention with this slide, you know, a couple methods, you, know, you can use a simplex method, there are also interior point methods, there are other methods that can be used to solve um, these linear programming problems. Okay, so let's just look at a quadratic programming problem, though. Okay, so here we're trying to uh, maximize. Now, in this case, it's just f of x equals a naught, which is a1 and a2, which are constants, as a function of x. So you can see that the optimum you know, would be right here. Now, here's a constraint that tells us we have to be on this side of the constraint. And uh, then our optimal value is going to be right here. Okay, so the optimal value is where the gradient of um, f, okay, where the gradient of f is going to be equal to zero. 
And so if I just say um, that's going to be equal to a1 plus 2a2x, okay? And then I solve that, then my optimal value is negative a1 divided by a2 times a2. Okay, but let's say I have a constraint here that says I have to be less than a certain amount on x, but this is the optimal value here that my optimizer wanted to find. Well, then my optimal value would be down here right at the constraint. Okay, so I can't, it doesn't allow it to go any further up. Okay, so um, this would be an example of a linear programming problem because we have a linear objective. Okay, this f of x might be our objective and this might be a constraint, for example, and the optimal solution would be here if we're trying to maximize f of x. Okay, so um, in reality though, it isn't just one constraint and one objective function, but we may have multiple constraints and maybe have to combine multiple objectives into one objective or do multi-objective optimization. So we typically have you know, an operating window um, where this might be, for example, a high limit on y2, a low limit on y2, and so that uh, creates a bounding region. And if I plot all of these constraints, um, in the end, I'm going to have an operating window, or these are the set of feasible solutions that are possible for this optimization problem. Okay, so let's just consider a um, you know refinery optimization problem. Now this is a very simplified case where we might have uh, two different crude oils that we can buy. And uh, the first one's just a little bit more expensive than the other one. And uh, we can produce from these different crude oils, gasoline, kerosene, fuel oil, and residual. Now in reality, these are from um, you know, a long time ago. The price of crude oil um, has gone up significantly um, and fluctuates a lot. So there's an opportunity to re-optimize the refinery as the prices of the products or the... Um, or the supply uh, materials change. Okay, so let's say for this, um, you know, this is data for uh, this example problem, and let's just say that you know crude oil one produces um, this in terms of product slate. So one barrel produces um, 0.8 barrels of gasoline, 0.05 barrels of kerosene, and 0.1 barrels of fuel oil, but it also costs 50 cents per barrel to process. Now crude oil two, crude oil two isn't gonna produce as much gasoline, but it will produce more fuel oil, but it also costs more to process. Okay, so I'm gonna have my X1 and X2 here. It has to be less than 24,000 barrels per day. Let's say I have an upper limit on my production. Um, then that would be a, a an equation that would describe a bounding region, okay, for my problem. Okay, so I'm just going to write out uh, my different equations, and then these two are going to be processing costs, so those are going to be part of the objective function. So we're going to try to maximize the profitability of this refinery given these constraints. Okay, so let's just do the solution, um, you'll write it out. We had our uh, gasoline, kerosene, fuel oil, and residual that we can produce from X1 barrels of crude one and X2 barrels of crude two, okay? And uh, we also you know, plot our income as well, okay? So we have uh, how much each of those products are worth. And, um, you know, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to say that my income, if I collapse all that down, simplify it, okay, then as I produce more X1, um, or as I buy more X1, I'm going to have 32.6 um, in terms of profit multiplier um, for um, one barrel of X1, and then a 26.8 multiplier for X2, okay? Um, and so that is my income, but my total profit is here. Okay, so I, it's more profitable for me to have more X2. But I also have these constraints. Okay, so let me just plot the feasible region. And if I zoom in on this, okay, so this, these are all of my uh, constraints. So 
So it has to be on this side of these constraints. These were less than constraints. So I can select anything within this feasible region. Okay, so I could select 20, okay, 20,000 barrels of crude one. And for example, I could select um, five of crude two, and that put me right here. Okay, so we can select different points within this feasible region, but we want to select the best one. Okay, so let's just go ahead and evaluate um, you know, a couple different points. Now this is a, a linear programming problem, so the solution is actually going to be at the vertex, okay, the intersection of two constraints. So I can just evaluate uh, the values at all of these vertices. And if you see here, this is going to be our optimal, but our solution is going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be two hundred and eighty-six thousand dollars, seven hundred forty, or two hundred eighty-six thousand seven hundred forty dollars uh, per uh, time period. Um, if we only went with crude number two, okay, zero crude number one, then our optimal profit would only be a hundred eighty thousand dollars. If we only went with crude number one, then our optimal value would only be two hundred forty-three thousand dollars. So the best solution is actually this one here. It's a combination of those two, and it's even higher than um, this one, which is a different solution, intersection of two different constraints. Okay, so there's our optimal profit. Um, so we want to also introduce you know, how this is done in practice today. Okay, so there are various optimization tools. Some of them like the Excel Solver, um, you know, Ample, AP Monitor, GAMS, PIMS, Romeo, many other optimization solvers are used to address this kind of problem. Okay, so let's just um, we're going to use AP Monitor uh, for this case, and uh, so we're going to type in a model. Um, you know, we can use a MATLAB or Python interface, um, or we can go to the web interface and. Uh, so go ahead and type in um, this address. Okay, you can also get there by just going to the apmonitor.com, select optimization problems, and then um, add F equals crude oil, and that will also load um, this optimization problem. Okay, so we have all of our constraints written out. We know that gasoline has to be less than 24,000, greater than zero kerosene fuel oil and the residual okay and here are our equations in the end we're trying to maximize our profit I have different optimization solvers I can use I'll just go ahead and select the AP op solver click the green button here okay so it came up with our optimal solution and um, if you scroll down just a little bit more you can also see the solver results Okay, but let's go ahead and go back to our View Solution Results tab, and this shows um, the various amounts of crude one and crude two that we should buy, and how much it's producing in terms of gasoline, kerosene, fuel oil, and residual. And we can see that gasoline and kerosene those hit upper bounds. Okay, so it's trying to maximize the profit, but in doing so, it made it to an upper bound for both the gasoline and kerosene production.